I'm here in the heart of Gdansk. It's an amazing place. Amber runs right through the veins of this incredible city. I'm actually currently standing on a street called Amber Street, and you can absolutely see why and where it gets its name from. There's amber literally everywhere I look. It's a tremendously important genuine gemstone to the people of Poland and something that Poland is absolutely famous for. So, uh, Marius, we're here on the Baltic coast. Um, this is this is where some of the amber is washed up on the beach. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Because there's a lot of amber covered by the Baltic Sea. Okay. So after the stormy weather, especially, it's, it's a, quite a few pieces can get washed off the sea. Yeah. And do people have to go into the water, or or is it just washed up? I mean, could I pick a piece up? Well, yeah. it's a competition finding the stones. Right, OK. So it's after the storm. Some people standing here have less chances finding anything yeah. rather than people going over there. OK. So they, they put like a special shoes as well. OK. Boots like a yeah. waterproof. And they go inside with the netting and they're trying to net it. Fantastic. It floats on the seawater. That's amazing. It's amazing to think that after storm activity, this gemstone is literally churned up from the seabed and then just displaced on the beach. I could be walking up and down the beach here, picking up pieces of amber. It really is fascinating. Let's find out how this incredible genuine gemstone gets to you. Well, we're here in the Jello Baltic Amber headquarters. It's a truly amazing place, a real Aladdin's cave of workmanship and craftsmanship here. Um, all the processes for our Baltic Amber pieces are done in this very building. Let's see how we get from this to these. One of the things that struck me about being here at the Jello headquarters is the amount of time and the amount of effort that goes into designing these incredible pieces. Um, I've got a design here which has literally just been sketched out on a piece of paper. It's then been transferred into a 3D design by the graphic designer here. Absolutely gorgeous. And then this design is then taken over to the 3D printer. Now this process takes up to 24 hours and what comes out is this incredible piece here. Now this piece is now ready to go to be made into a rubber mould and the end product, as I know you will agree, is absolutely stunning. Look at that. One of the many stages that the Baltic Amber Sterling Silver pieces will go through is this stage here. A 3D printout is taken and then it's brought down here and made into a rubber mould which is then filled with wax. These individual components are then adhered onto a wax tree and they're ready to be made into sterling silver items. If you're lucky enough to own a piece of Baltic Amber that's been set into sterling silver, it will go through this process here where sterling silver is heated up to over a thousand degrees centigrade and then the liquid silver is poured into a plaster cast mould, taken out, cooled and this incredible sterling silver tree is created. So how does it go through, um, if, if you oxidise something, what, what, um, what do you do to it? Uh, this is like a solution, yeah. you dip it in, yeah. Uh, it, it makes silver black, black and then yeah. goes in the process, in the polishing process. Yeah. And uh, the bits, when they can uh, be polished, they, yeah. they go white and everything yeah. remains inside. Remains black, yeah. yeah. We're in the cutting and polishing room where not only the sterling silver is polished, but also, as you can see, what Andrew is doing here. He's um, filing the amber down and polishing it to that really, really high shine. Now this process can take a long time, 10 to 15 minutes for this particular piece of amber. And this is something which Andrew will have learned over a course of years. And really what sets a really fantastic lapidrist or, or polisher apart from others is the level of wastage that will be produced from a piece of amber like this. It can be up to two thirds wastage, um, but the better the polisher, the less the wastage. I 
I've got these two very different pieces of Baltic amber here. This one here is more of a butterscotch colour. Um, this one here, Andrew, has been um, uh, filing, cutting, polishing for the last 15 minutes or so. And just look at this incredible gem. The amazing thing about this is that you've got a gorgeous leaf which is embedded into the amber. Now, we didn't actually see that until the final polished um, uh, process had been applied to the gem. So it's just full of surprises. Absolutely amazing. One of the many elements that your Baltic Amber jewellery will go through to add that extra bit of quality is the handmade element. The Baltic Amber is first graduated by colour on a white background that makes sure that the continuity of quality goes right the way through your pieces. It's then added by hand to the sterling silver component and it then goes through a rigorous quality control process. Just something else that adds quality to your pieces. Probably the most important process that any of our Baltic Amber jewellery goes through is the quality control process. All of the finished items are bought up here and they're checked whether it's for colour continuity or the finished quality of the item and once they're then stamped either with the Jello trademark or with the Jewellery Maker trademark or with the 925 stamp they're ready to be shipped to the UK and go to you.